right, Fit Church and Fit Church Online, thank you all for being here today. And we'd like to welcome you into our service as you welcome us into your living rooms and your kitchens and just wherever you may be watching from today. Um, today, Jesus is alive. Amen. If you believe that today in the comments down below, just make sure you put down there that Jesus is alive. He is risen. What a beautiful sunrise it was early this morning. Uh, as many people gathered online and gathered at their house on their porches um, to watch the sunrise. So today, let's worship the Lord, our risen Savior, in spirit and in truth today. If you're at home, we'd love for you to stand wherever you are here at the church for the very few people who are here. We'll stand here today. Let's all stand and let's sing together the old rugged cross.
give God praise today. Come on. And you all may be seated. Maybe you'll keep playing that today. But where we are today, we can take this guitar off real quick. Today we're going to be participating in Holy Communion. So as Jamie's been going around already this morning, she's been passing out the elements. And while I'm talking right now, for you guys at home today, if you've not already gathered your elements where you are, the, the juice and, uh, and the bread, uh, which represents uh, the, the blood in his body. So you go ahead and do that real quick as we kind of set this up. Um, but looking back over the week, the Passion Week, and everything that Jesus went through, and as he celebrated uh, the Passover meal, and at another time where he celebrated the, the Last Supper, uh, all of this wrapped into one as we think about it. Uh, we can never forget that Jesus shed his blood for the sins of all mankind. And that his body was broken so that our sinful bodies could be healed. And I think today, if you believe that Jesus has healed your sinful body, we ought to just give him praise right now, wherever you are, for the great things that he has done. So I wanted to set this up today. Um, in the band, our worship team will take communion as well as everyone at home. Uh, and the people we have gathered here. But I want to read to you today as we set this up, and I'll, I'll give you instructions on when to drink and uh, when to eat. And just so you know, we will eat first and drink second. So, um, 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul in chapter 11, verses 23 through 33, it says this as I'm reading along. So you just kind of read with me wherever you are. Or if you can see this on our screen, Cody, I don't know if we can or not. This is what it says. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, Eat it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread or drink this cup of the Lord, um, wait, go back. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the cup uh, and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you. And we can just pause right there. We live in a world right now where many are weak and sick. And the truth of the matter is, long before there was a virus named COVID-19, there was a virus on this earth known as sin. But today we know who heals the weak and the sick. He said this, For this reason many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Notice he didn't say condemned by the world. He said we would not be condemned with the world the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment. And the rest I will set in order when I come. Jesus is coming back. But until Jesus comes back, we do what we're about to do, the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, to proclaim to the world that we are of his blood and his body. That he sacrificed his so that we would live forever. He came to the earth to take away the sin of man, the sickness of sin. And can I just give you some great biblical truth today? There is nothing that's too big for our God. There is nothing that can silence our God. There's nothing that can ever replace our God. So many people today 
who are wondering and who are perhaps afraid, perhaps nervous, I want you to turn your eyes to the God who loves you today. To the God who, in John 3, 16, says, sent his only begotten son to save man from his sins. So today we will partake of the body and the blood. So if you're ready today, and we'll kind of do this, you guys at home, just follow along with me. I'm going to be in Matthew 26, verse 26. If you'll go ahead and take the bread that you've been given. And if you're at home and you don't have the bread, you can use a goldfish cracker or just kind of whatever you have. It's the act that matters today. Matthew 26, 26 says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread. So go ahead and take your bread and hold it in your hand today. As they were eating, Jesus took bread. He blessed it, and he broke it. So break the bread. And then it says, and gave it to the disciples and said, take this. This is my body. Let's all eat together. For those of us eating Hawaiian rolls today, we can eat on that for a while. And then Matthew 26, verse 27 and 28. If you go ahead and take your cup. The Bible says, For he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Let's all drink together. bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer. Father, today we thank you so much. We thank you so much, Lord, that you saw fit to send Jesus Christ to live among us, to step out of glory in heaven, to come down and dwell among men, to heal men, to, to save lives, and most importantly, to save souls. God, may we be a body of people today who live to turn people to your son, Jesus. May everything that we do and everything that we say and all the acts that we perform, may we glorify your son in all things. When the world gets dark, allow our light to shine brighter. Help us to be disciples who make disciples. Help us, Father, to be a, a, a peaceful family of brothers and sisters whose mission is to just lead other people into your presence. God, we could not do anything on our own. We're certainly not worthy of all the blessings that you have given us. But we stand here today not in fear, but in reverence, in awe of what you've already done for us. And we live the remainder of our days in anticipation of the great things that are still to come. The Bible proclaims that as surely as Jesus came the first time, Jesus Christ is coming back again. And when he comes back and he takes his church home, I pray we would all be in that number, in that role. For it's not the names on the church membership that matter. It's the names on the role when it's called up yonder that makes all the difference in your life. We thank you today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen. I would ask Jamie to collect the elements today. Um, you guys just hold those cups, and she'll come around and grab those as we prepare our hearts to continue in worship.
and praise today. We're going to move on. Brother Cody, if you come up and ask the blessing over our offering today as Manny continues to play. Worship team, most of you guys, you may be seated. Today, if you'd like, for those of you who are watching at home, you can go to Fit Community Church or uh, Fit Community dot Church, and down there at the bottom, there's a button that uh, it says Donate on that tab. If you guys were following along in your Proclaim app, there, if you're following along with today's message, um, you can also give that way. Uh, you can give securely on that uh, on that app there. And I want you guys to know, and, and we want to thank you for all that you do and for uh, all that you have done for continuing to provide for the ministry, uh, for the needs of the church uh, and ministry partners in our community. And um, we know the church may have changed just a little bit, but God never changes. Just sometimes the method has to change just a little bit. And so we are adapting. We've changed our methods so that the works that Jesus began will continue on. So right now, let's just give God a clap of praise for everything that he's doing. We've come through the Passion Week. We saw Good Friday come and go. We saw that Jesus was broken and beaten. He Walked up the hill to Calvary, Golgotha, the place of the skull. You got to imagine how Jesus felt in that time. He already knew what was coming. But if you were there and as you walked up the hill and you looked down to where the remains of so many people laid, there were different bones and fragments of bones and that's exactly what they thought was going to happen to Jesus, that he would simply die on the cross and that he would be left for whatever wild animals would come and take him away or eat at his flesh down there in that valley of bones and fragments of pieces. But a man named Joseph of Arimathea, there he came and he, he asked if he could put if he could have the body of Jesus after Jesus had died on Friday, on Good Friday there, and he took him to that borrowed tomb, and there were also people who came along and witnessed when Jesus' body was put into this borrowed tomb, and they stood back, and they watched the stone be rolled in front of the tomb to not be opened again. And just so the Romans knew that nobody would remove his body, they placed guards at the tomb at the door to make sure nobody would remove his body. <laughs> they didn't know what was about to happen. And then Saturday of their culture is known as the Sabbath day. No work can be done on the Sabbath day. And so they had to wait that afternoon. And we're going to get into this today. But there's a reason that Resurrection Sunday was on the first day of the week. And the third day of all of this trial there. So what we want to do today before we dive into Mark chapter 16. I want to pray with you. Pray with you at home. And I want to ask you to open your hearts and open your minds. 
and prepare to receive Jesus into your life. Whether this is your first time or you're coming back from a long time, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, is a great day to have your life changed forever by Jesus. Let's all pray together. Father, we thank you today. I thank you for this time that we've already had. It's been a blessing to be in your house, to be online and other people's homes, just to be able to have fellowship in an unusual way. God, I pray for all those who, who desperately this year need Jesus more than anything. This has been 2020 so far. It's been a year of things that we did not expect to happen, but yet it happened. I would imagine nobody expected Jesus to be resurrected in his day. But I believe today the same way that Lord Jesus was resurrected from the grave, we will be resurrected from a virus, from a curse, from sin, from death, from hell. We don't have to worry about that today because we know who has already made a way. We know who the way maker is today. And we know in whom we believe and in who we put our trust today. His name is Jesus. Our one goal here today during this service is that you would come to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. That his death would not be something that was just fairy tale or folklore, but it would be the reason that you believe that you have everlasting life today. We can't believe in all the things that we see. Today we trust God by faith. God, give us the faith to believe today like never before. Let us praise you. Let us serve you. Let us be witnesses into all parts of your world. It's in Jesus' name I pray and I ask these things today. And all God's people everywhere you are, say it together. Amen and amen. Wherever you are, give God one more clap of praise. This is the second year in a row Easter has been highly unusual for me. Last year, we were in a school. As Roxborough Community School had hosted our church for a long time. But last year, I woke up and I was extremely sick. And it was such a big deal. Uh, and church was such a big deal. And Easter Sunday was such a big deal that ultimately, um, this, the service had to be completely different. And we were kind of... Just canceled. Jesus' resurrection was not canceled. It just means I, that day, I didn't get to participate. But the magnitude of Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, is not based on whether or not I was able to participate. It's based solely on what Jesus did. And then this year, for the second year in a row, it's completely weird. You may think this is completely weird. You're in your living room today. Some of you are in your pajamas. Some of you have not fixed your hair or put your makeup on yet. And matter of fact, for some of you guys, your wife is looking at you really funny right now, wishing you would get dressed as we're in the middle of a worship service. And everyone said, Amen. It's completely weird in the time that we're in. Or you may be riding down the road watching this in your car. If you are, please pull over because that's dangerous. It's just you can watch it later. But things have changed a little bit. But what has not changed is what this day means. And that's what we hope you get out of this today. That this has never been about you. It's never been about me. This has always been about Jesus and what Jesus has done and what Jesus is doing today. I want to walk with you for just a few minutes through the Gospel of Mark. And the reason I chose Mark is we had communion today. Mark is a rapid pace, rapid fire, no nonsense kind of guy. And he gives it to us straight and he gives it to us fast. We're just going to walk through eight verses. And I pray that you would take notes. Go ahead and grab your Bible right now. Get ready to highlight some words, underline some things, circle some passages. And let's dive in. Verse number one says this. Now when the Sabbath was passed, that was yesterday. Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices that they might come and anoint him. And I said earlier that nothing could be done on the Sabbath, otherwise they would have already been there. 
So what these ladies ended up having to do was wait till about 6 o'clock on that Sabbath day. After 6, it started to get dark, but the restrictions were relieved. They could actually go back to work. They, could, they had now uh, finished with their Sabbath day, and they were moving into the first day of the week. So they had made sure that they had gathered their, their spices so that the moment they could get out of their house and the moment they could see and get on the road, they were headed to the tomb, which brought us to early this morning. And I don't know what time you guys got up first this morning, but I've been up since almost four, which is making for a really long day. But it's a good day. It's an awesome day. And when you're living, or I, I feel a lot like Mary and, and these ladies here in the passage, when you're anticipating something, it makes it really difficult to sleep because you're excited about what's to come. You're excited about where you're going. Like if you've ever planned a vacation, which some of y'all are doing once they open up vacation spots again, then when that time comes, you get super focused, hyper focused. Like the night before you go on vacation, you clean the house. Not just one room, every room, top to bottom, even the toilets. You clean them all because you're hyper-focused. Because tomorrow when you wake up, you want to be able to go and do that thing that you've been anticipating. And that's kind of how these ladies were. They were anticipating the early first day of the week morning so that they could go and anoint Jesus' body. There's a whole lot that to think about in this. I was thinking about it earlier. I was talking to my family about it. Like they didn't even think how they were going to get to Jesus' body. If you think about this, there was a tremendously large stone rolled in front of the door. That's problematic. But probably even more so than that being an obstacle, there was also Roman guards there to make sure that nobody could come to this tomb and steal the body of Jesus and then claim that he was alive. That was like their biggest fear because... Uh, he had said and proclaimed that he was the son of God. And they thought there's no way as long as he's locked in there. He can't be the son of God. He's not what the Old Testament prophesied about. There's no way he's the Messiah. He's in that tomb. And the prophecy says that our Savior would be alive. He couldn't be in a tomb somewhere. So they set up Roman guards so that nobody could come and steal his body. These are problems. These ladies weren't thinking about those problems. We talked this morning when Peter and the other disciple come early to the tomb that morning after Mary runs back to him and says, hey, I need you to come see this. His body's not there. Right? They weren't thinking about problems. They were just thinking about they had to get there. And listen to what happened in verse 2. Very early in the morning, before sunrise, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen, but they started their journey before. So they're kind of walking along. They've got to get to where they were going. And as they're walking there, if, if you go back and look at our page today and you can watch that sun come up in the east behind me as I was talking today. As these ladies were walking to that tomb, perhaps the sun was just coming up and lighting the way. I think about how when we see Jesus for who he really is, he lights the way, doesn't he? He lights paths that maybe we've never seen before. He opens up doors that had previously been closed before. He shows us things that we'd never even thought possible before. So they went there early when the sun had risen. And in verse 3, I love this right here. They said among themselves, now it's dawning on them. As the closer they're getting, they're like, oh wait, how are we going to get in? We're, we're just, we're, we're not strong enough to move that stone. How, how are we, in our own strength, how are we going to do this thing? So they said among themselves, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? Certainly not the guards. They were actually taking a chance by even going there to be in the presence of these guards. But how many times... Have you called out to God and said, who will do this for me today? We know what the answer is, right? But probably in their anticipation, they're just thinking, oh my goodness, I've got these spices. I, I just want to get there to anoint his body. And listen, the whole part, point of anointing Jesus' body uh, was not like embalming. It was so that he smelled good. And, and as they covered his uh, linen cloth there that he had wrapped around him. Isn't that something they wanted there? Jesus to smell good. 
Who will roll away the stone from in front of that door? That day they had expectations of what they would find. They had expectations. This is an Easter where nothing is what we expected this year. We had no idea we would be doing Simply Church Online. We had no idea that the world would be turned upside down. We had no idea that the world's economy would be shredded right before our eyes. We had no idea this year that'd be, as of the other day, 6.6 million people in the unemployment lines. When you see the pictures on TV, those people didn't think they'd be in lines to get food from food banks who desperately need food. This is not a year of things that we expected. I expected baseball to be on by now. And I don't know that it'll be on. We expected Duke to win the national championship this year. Don't, I don't want any comments. It's just my opinion. It's what we expected. Didn't happen, right? It's not what we expected. These ladies are about to find out that what they were thinking is not going to be what they expected. It's going to be so much greater. In verse 4, it said, But when they looked up, I love that imagery there. How many times have we just been walking around with our heads hung in shame when what we really needed to do was just look up to the one who takes away our shame? Amen? It said, but when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away for it was very large. Write this down somewhere in your Bible. God defies our expectations. When we start to put God in a box or we start to think that God can't do something, he will defy and exceed our human expectations every single time. So often we limit ourselves just by our human capacity to think. But don't beat yourself up about it because we were not built to think like God. But we were built to trust God. Today, God is calling us all to, to trust in Him. Verse number 5. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. First of all, the, the, the door had been moved, and now there's someone sitting in there who was obviously not Jesus. If you look in the Gospel of John, you'll notice there were actually two angels there. This one that Mark speaks of happened to be the one, uh, we know that Mark's Gospel is from Peter's point of view, so we get this here. He was sitting at the right side there, and, and when the ladies walked in, they were alarmed. Why is this person here? Why is this, they didn't know it yet, but why is this angel of the Lord here, and where is Jesus? Because we saw him put in this tomb. We would be alarmed too. We would have questions. Sometimes God does amazing things for us. And we simply can do nothing but stand there with our mouths wide open in awe or in, in just amazement. These guys, these ladies were alarmed at what they saw. So this is a different kind of fear if you circle alarm there. They were actually scared in this moment as to what happened and what was going to happen next. And what was this person, this angel, about to tell them? But watch what he says in verse 6. He said to them, do not be alarmed. In other words, don't be afraid of what you see. Don't be afraid just because your eyes see one thing, there's something else going on here. He said, you seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is, everybody say risen. 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 He is not here. See the place where they laid him. And I can imagine the angel just did his hand like this and said, he's not here. I believe that angels often come to us to show us things. That we didn't previously see. To help us believe in an unseen God whose creation we see all around us. If you've ever had an encounter with an angel, you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever thought back in your life when somebody just showed up seemingly out of nowhere and did something for you, it's quite possible that that was an angel of the Lord in disguise sent just for you. And just because sometimes we fail to recognize doesn't take away the magnitude 
of what we saw. Listen to verse 7 and 8. He said, but go, tell his disciples and Peter. Don't you find that odd? I, I didn't read this a bunch of times. Go tell his disciples, and then he sets Peter apart. He said, and Peter. Peter was perhaps the leader of this ragtag group of disciples. He was definitely the most feisty one. I think I identify with Peter, at least I did in my younger days. I've been watching Rambo this past week. I'm starting to feel young again. Don't judge me. You watched it too. <laughs> Peter spent a lot of time with Jesus. Peter's also the one who denied Jesus three times, and Jesus told him he would. This angel says, go tell his disciples and Peter. In other words, the wrong that Peter did, the angel says, don't worry about it. Go tell Peter. He needs to know this as much as anybody needs to know this today. Because Jesus loves him today. He says that he, Jesus, is going before you into Galilee. And there you will see him as he said to you. So they went out quickly and they fled from the tomb, for they trembled and were amazed. All of a sudden, we went from being alarmed to now we're trembling in reverential fear, meaning that amazement, that awe, that draw, that jaw-dropping, just awe that God has done something here that's just amazing. And then it said, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. You couldn't talk either. You'd be like, how did this happen? How is, I heard him when he said it. He said he would meet me in Galilee, but I didn't really believe it. And how many times have we been there when God made a promise to us in our soul, and yet we did not take him for his word? He promised us that he would send his son to the cross, but we didn't take him for his word. We didn't believe that he could really do it, and then he did it. And the whole time he was on the cross, he was forgiving us of our sins. As our sins were being piled on his shoulders. You need to get this imagery in your mind because this is brutal. They took his hands or his wrists and they nailed him with what would have been equivalent of railroad spikes, big old spikes. They wanted to make sure when the spikes went into the wood, there was no way he was coming off. And then they put his feet together, and then they drove those spikes down in there. But see, down below him, either right below his, his backside there, or a little bit lower, you got to know what, how crucifixion works. When they hang somebody like this, it's brutal on the lungs and on the blood supply. When you're hung like this, all your blood is leaving, going down your body, down your extremities. And the longer you stay there, the harder it becomes to breathe. And so what would happen is the criminals on the cross, they would gasp for air and they would literally push. And when they would push, they would get a little bit of air in their lungs, but just a little bit, barely enough to keep them alive. But here's the thing. You had to have the criminals and Jesus had to die on Good Friday because they could not have them there on the Sabbath. In the Old Testament prophesied, the prophet said that Jesus would not have any broken bones in his body. This is an amazing thing. Because if you didn't die on that cross when they thought you should die, then they would literally come up there and break your legs so that you could not push up anymore. So you could not, because it was physically impossible to pull with your arms. And they believed what they saw. They believed that Jesus was dying on that cross. But as he was preparing to take his last breath, humanity was preparing to take its first. Because you're not even alive until Jesus is alive in you. Amen. See, the first birth, we're born into sin. And it's fun for a while until it's not. But it's the second birth, the regeneration. The believing in Jesus, the forgiveness of our sins, that's the one that counts. And Jesus gave up his life so that we could have life. Let me give you a couple of things. I want you to write these down. Number one is this. Jesus won the war. 
Maybe put that in the comments below down there. Just say, Jesus won the war. You say, well, what do you mean? 1 Corinthians 15, verses 56 through 57. It says, for sin is the sting that results in death, and law gives sin its power. But thank God, everybody say, thank God. Thank God He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody, wherever you are. Jesus has won the war. We will not be defeated. Yes, our bodies, one of these days, has to go away. But our souls remain forever. Jesus has won the war. Number two, there is no obstacle that Jesus cannot overcome. Not one. Not a stone in front of a tomb door. Not, the, not, not an, an ocean uh, that has waves crashing all around a boat. Not a cross on Calvary's hill that Jesus cannot overcome. Jeremiah 32, the prophet Jeremiah says this in verse 26, 27. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And all God's people said, No. There is nothing too hard for God. There is no length that He won't go through to chase you down, to pull you back. God loves people. And God desires for people to call out on His Son so that they may have communion with Him. God is Lord over all things today. Can I get an amen? amen? And if death could not hold Jesus down, then certainly it cannot hold us down. No virus can hold us down. No cancer can hold us down. No sickness, no heartache. There is nothing that can separate you from the love of Jesus. It's just an obstacle. And it will too be defeated. Philippians 2, 6-11. Paul says, Who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has... Highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to glory of God the Father. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. He is Lord today. The way Jesus did it was with such humbleness and meekness. Let me give you one more thing today before we sing. One of these days, we will see Jesus face to face. We will see Jesus face to face. How do I know? Romans 14, 11. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God, so that each of us shall give account of himself to God. And it won't be from a distance. It'll be in close proximity when that happens. But we don't have to wait till that day. Resurrection Sunday is the best day possible to confess with your mouth, bow your knees, and give it all to God. In Philippians 2, 8 through 11. Paul says, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and those under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. He meant it so much. He put it in multiple letters. Because it's what he believed. Romans 10.9. Says if you confess with your mouth. The Lord that. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. And let's pause. Let's just stop there for a minute. I believe. With somebody watching online today wherever you are or whenever you may watch this, that maybe you've never just called out to God. 
and asked him to come into your presence. Maybe you've thought about it and thought it was a great idea, but you've just never done it. You've just never taken the plunge and said, God, I am all in from this day forward. But let me ask you this question today. Do you want to be saved? Do you want to be saved? You say, well, what does it mean to be saved? What it means is you will securely God has given a way for you to know in your heart, to have security in your heart, that one day you will dwell in the presence of Jesus Christ. Well, there is no more pain, no more sorrow, no more viruses, no more cancers, no more diseases, none of that. It's only joy. It's only shouting around the throne, raising hallelujahs. How many of y'all think we ought to raise a hallelujah on Easter Sunday? If Jesus was raised from the dead, then we ought to be raising a hallelujah in this place today and all around the world today. Do you want to be saved? 1 John 3, 2 is my last scripture. It says, Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Remember I said, you will see Jesus face to face. The question for all of us today, if that day was today, are we ready to see Jesus Christ face to face? Have you made peace with Jesus this Easter Sunday? Did it mean anything at all to you when you saw that sun rising in the east this morning the same way that Jesus, the Son of God, rose from the dead? I wonder today, what will you do with the time that you have left? What will you do with this message and this invitation that you're being given right now? Will you make things right with Jesus today? Worship team, come on up. If you're watching online today with every head bowed and every eye closed, I can't think of a better day to surrender your life to Jesus. I can't think of a better Sunday to call out on Him. And to profess that you know that you are a sinner, but now you know your Savior. God is calling somebody today by name. And although I don't know who that person is, maybe today is the day that you believe. And He's calling your name today. And you feel that calling in your heart right now. You feel that as if it's a heavy weight on your chest right now. You feel the voice of God in your soul right now. And He's simply calling you where you are. And He's not calling you to stay still. He's calling you to step out. He's calling you to surrender your life. He's calling you to make the change through Him that only He can do for you. Will you call on Him right now? Now in this time, will you just say this? Will you just say, Lord, I believe today. I believe today, Father, that Jesus Christ died for my sins so that I might have everlasting and eternal life. Just say, I believe today that I am a sinner saved by grace. Say, I believe today that when I die, I know that I will spend all eternity in heaven. I have no doubt in my mind. I am secure because I am held by the arms of Jesus today. If you prayed that prayer today, then you are saved. And we would love to talk to you about what happens next in your walk with God. What it means to be baptized. What it means to be in community. Whatever that looks like in today's time. But we want to hear from you today, if that's you. Would you simply surrender your life to Christ today? We're going to sing a couple of songs and we're going to be done. But don't leave yet. I want you to stay with us during the next two songs, during this worship set. And allow God to speak to your heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
pray along or sing along. Whatever God's leading you to do right now, just make sure you do it in this time. Our Father everlasting, the all created one, God.
working. Death held in the grave couldn't stop it. He was still working. When it was silent Saturday, he was still working. When he was in that tomb, God was still working. Because can't no grave stop our Lord today. Amen. Thank you so much.